Another really important concept in magnetism is that a wire will exert a force on another wire. And in this video, I'm going to try to convince you why that has to happen. So here I have a picture of two wires on the left. I'm actually going to build this up from scratch. Let's uh, use this white space down here. Let's say I have two wires and their currents are in the same direction. So I'm going to call this I1 and this is I2. You know that a wire will produce a magnetic field. So if we look over here, we wrap our fingers around I1, what we're going to get is a field that goes like this. So what I should really write here, it's coming out of the page on this side and into the page on that side. So you should put your thumb right now in line with my I1 here and see that the field has to go into the page over here. So what that means is that if we have a second wire over here, there is a field pointing into the page at I2. So let's just look at this then. So here we have a current I, we have a field into the page. And I want to ask you, what's the force on that wire due to the magnetic field? Well, F is equal to IL cross B. IL cross B. So L cross B, or you put your fingers in the direction of the current, and it's going into the page. So what you get is the force, you get a force going to the left, and you get that using the right hand rule. So what we've just determined here is that wire 1 will exert a force on wire 2 because of the field pattern that it makes. So that is the force on that wire. And what I want you to do, pause the video if you want, do the exact same analysis that I just did, but the other way around. Figure out which way the field, because of wire 2, what direction it is, and tell me the direction that the force on wire 1 has to be due to the second wire. And what you're going to find, spoiler alert, is the force points to the right. What if I2 was pointing the other way? Well, in that case, let's just get my blue pen again for the wires. I1, I2. The magnetic field from I1 is the same, so the field, I'll do it in red again, over there is into the page. Right hand rule, put your thumb in the direction of the current, field goes into the page, but now my current is going down. Current is going down. So if the current is going down, again we're going to use the cross product formula. So put your fingers in the direction of the current, which is downwards, and then point them into the field, you'll find that the force from your fingers is going to the right. And if you do this again over here, you're going to find the force is going to the left. So just by using the two right hand rules, the right hand rule that you use to get the magnetic field direction from a wire, and the right hand rule that you use to determine the direction of a force due to a charge in a field, you're going to find that if you have two wires going with current in the same direction, then they attract. If the currents go in the opposite direction, then they repel. Then they repel. And what is the value of those forces? Well, the value on those forces, let's just think about it. So it's IL cross B. B is going to be mu naught I over 2 pi R. We're multiplying that by IL, so it's just IL cross B, and the sine theta part goes away again because everything in this case is perpendicular, in this example, anyway. So what we'll often do in questions like this is instead of talking about the force, we'll talk about the force per unit length exerted on the wires. So what you find then is F divided by L equals mu naught I1 I2 over 2 pi R. So that's where this formula comes from. That's the magnitude of the force per unit length on, that a wire exerts on the other wire. R is the distance between the two wires.